Hello and welcome to the Friends Talk Film Spoiler Review. Um, today, myself and my friend Richard are going to be reviewing Star Trek Beyond, which you just come back from seeing today. So we're going to give you our thoughts and opinions on the film. Um, bear in mind, the title is Spoiler Review, so we're going to go into full plot details of the movie. So, Richard, first of all, overall opinions of the film. Definite, definite tribute to the Star Trek line. Mm -hmm. um, loved most of it, um, if I had to do a graph of where the movie was and I'll do it reverse so that it's kind of like and then it ends. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, that's a pretty accurate graph actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've I've kind of got the same feeling. You as can well. tell I worked in finance. Um, <laughs> so the movie for me has a has a very troubling start. It has yeah. a very troubling start, uh, and I will elaborate in details later where you are a little bit conflicted on where this is going um I, the start of the film is very reminiscent of the start of wrath of khan right where okay. kirk is very somber and mm -hmm. kind of like down and he's kind of a little lost about what he's doing although ironically in wrath of khan he is an admiral and he wants to go back to find a ship ah, right. in this okay. he's still a captain and he's made an application although he's no, not told any of his crew this he's made an application to become a vice admiral that's right and, yeah. so it's kind of a reversal uh, yeah so right, reversal okay. he's kind of disillusioned with being a captain yeah. because it's kind of mundane and routine okay um, well we'll go we'll go to get yeah. into the specifics now so the film is directed by Justin Lin who um, is most known for his um, directorials of uh, The Fast and Furious from 3 till 6 and the second season of uh, True Detective um, it's produced by J.J. Abrams, um, who's obviously just come off the success of Star Wars, and he uh, rebooted the franchise by directing the first Star Trek. Um, it's got the usual stars coming back, so um, Chris Pine as um, James T. Kirk, um, Zachary Quinto as Spock, Carl Urban as Bones, um, you've got Zoe Salanda as Lieutenant Uhura, Simon Pegg back as Scotty, John Cho as uh, Zulu, and the late Anton uh, Yelchin as Chekhov. Um, and then obviously we've got the new baddies and the new characters which will go in um, when we go through so yeah you spoke about the beginning of the film so the beginning of the film kicks off with um, Kirk he's in some kind of temple and he's on a diplomatic peace mission so he's talking to these beasts up on a higher platform he's offering them a gift of peace and it's a uh, peace and it's this old weapon that he says not used anymore but it was kind of a symbol of, of, of peaceful negotiations they take great offense to this and uh, these big monsters are like growling roaring booming voice in this temple they jump down to attack Kirk and they're the size of cats yeah, so, yeah it, <laughs> it's quite a visual it's, quite a funny joke it, you, does, it, it tickles a little bit when you first see it it does seem that there's a trend with a lot of Star Trek movies that the opening segment has to be a bit of a gag yeah so in the first movie uh well in the first movie there's tragedy but then when you meet kirk as a kid you see the chase and the cars yeah, and the car that puts a lot yeah. of smiles on people's faces um in the second movie they are they steal an artifact and they're running and then yes. they jump into the water and that's then, right and, yeah. and then the so, ship is actually underwater yeah. which is a quite cool take or something you know you, we didn't know that the enterprise could do that's right, and in this yeah. one they've done a very similar thing so there's yeah. a gag in the middle to just reel you into it to the to the comedy and the parody yeah, it, of, yes, yeah, right, Star Trek, yeah. yeah and so they uh, they beam um Kurt back on board to the ship uh, he's got a couple of these creatures with him and some of the rest of the crew are trying to chase them down um and then we go into sort of like a captain's log so we get the voiceover by kirk um kind of just telling us where the characters are in the movie so they're three years into a five-year journey so it's log 966 um it's on the stargate log and Kirk, he's, like you said, he's a bit disillusioned. You just get this vibe. You get this vibe, vibe of the day yeah. Even, emotion. even from the scene, you get this vibe that he's not happy. He's not himself. Mm -hmm. He looks older. He looks wiser. Mm -hmm. It becomes... It looks like they tried to grey him a little bit in it. Yeah. Or, or like to turn yeah. to the hair to make him look a little bit older. Because essentially, I think what they're trying to say is he will look like William Shatner. Yeah, In, in a funny right. way. So... Um, and of course, there's a reference to that later in the movie. Yeah, um, and you get the scene where yeah. he goes into his wardrobe and he's got like ten costumes, the captain costume, yep. all the same. So it's that repetitiveness, and he's kind of questioning why are we even on this voyage? You know, he's kind of lost maybe the meaning mm. behind it all. Um, and uh, then he, it's like two days before Kirk's birthday. Um, he's in the bar in the ship, um, and uh, Bones comes in. They have kind of a heart to heart. He opens up the fact that. He feels that he, well, he joined Starfleet on a dare. He, he's always been in his father's shadows. And um, he doesn't really know who he is anymore. Again, and... this scene is just like in Khan. Mm -hmm. When he, uh, Bones in Khan, uh, pops by Kirk's uh, quarters. Yeah. In, um, in San Francisco. Because mm -hmm. at the time, the Enterprise is in space dock. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's his birthday. 
just like right. this movie. Yeah. It brings in some Romulan ale, mm -hmm. and it's God damn it, Jim, take back your command. So it's just yeah. a very interesting role reversal. So you can see Simon Pegg was, as he's always said, influenced by yeah. by the by the previous movies. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that this will be, you know, this is movie three in this timeline, but the resemblance to movie two at this stage mm -hmm. is 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 very very stark. So mm -hmm. it's quite clear that they they kind of wanted to do a role reversal of sorts and everything is a little upside down given the, the reinvention of the whole franchise yeah absolutely um so then the uh the crew obviously have been on this mission a long time so they're now docking at the new space station called yorktown quite a strange name um but um so th at this point we find out a little bit more of the characters where they're at so um spock comes off uh the ship and we find that him and hura have split up um, we don't get any reason really for it at that point. It's just a kind of she offers to give him the pendulum back that he gave her. And he was like, no, you know, once a Vulcan gives a gift, they cannot receive it back. Um, it's, it's a very weird kind of scene. Um, and then we have um, Sulu. He's greeted by his um, daughter and husband. Um, now, obviously, a lot of the stuff was made before this movie. The fact that John Cho came out and said that, yeah, the character is gay um, in this new franchise. Simon Pegg has said he did it as a nod to um, the actor who played mm -hmm. him originally. Um, I forget his name. Uh, George Takai. George Takai, sorry, <laughs> yeah. Um, who came out, I think it was in 2005 as gay. And um, like now George Takai really didn't like the fact that the character was changed. And he said, you know, it didn't match the original and, you know, it, it, he wasn't happy about it. Um, is it really an issue in this film? I said in, in a previous podcast, if you're going to do it, do it properly. Mm -hmm. It's very weak. It's, uh, you wait for it to happen. Mm -hmm. He sees his little girl, gives her a kiss, which is powerful enough. He gives her a kiss and a hug, which is powerful enough for you to ascertain that's maybe your daughter. daughter. Yeah. But then the affection to what should be his husband wasn't there no i mean it could have uh, been yeah it could have been, been a brother, brother right yeah, could have been a really good friend the, yeah because the charge between them and you I know mean, i was expecting we, at least an on-screen kiss or yeah something. we may as well we may as well just say that look there is no real interaction between them for the rest of the movie yeah you yeah know? that's right she's that's, they, that's they, they're on the yorktown and we'll get to the the danger for that later on but it's just i like i said don't do it for the sake of doing it have you know a, a firm statement yeah. about equality mm -hmm. um and not just try, try and tick a box yeah so again george the has come out and, and come out and come out as as right in that one mm -hmm. because for the for, you know yeah for anyone that wanted to see some form of wall broken down in that movie they're yeah. going to be a little bit no, disappointed no absolutely. so if they they may as well have not said it at all before the film yeah and if they'd had the scene it wouldn't have been a it wouldn't have been a factor. Yeah. Like, but because they came out yeah. and said it, it didn't have the impact it should have. So, um, so then we have, um, we found out that Kirk has applied for a position of um, sort of like Vice Admiral, I yeah. think it is, um, on the space station um, and suggests that Spock take his place as captain on the Enterprise. You know, he said he's, you know, he's an outstanding officer and he would be an excellent captain. Um, the person he's speaking to, I guess she's an Admiral, uh, which says the council will discuss the appointment whilst the crew go out on a distress mission. So basically a ship arrives um, at the um, space station, the alien on board, and she says that her crew is in danger and they need rescuing. Just so happens to be in uncharted um, areas of space. Yeah. Um, so uh, they don't know what they're going into. Um, but obviously the Enterprise is the best navigational ship in the fleet. It's the fastest, so they're going. Um, then obviously, movie cliche, I guess. The rescue mission turns out to be an ambush. Yeah. Um, but we're led into, I think it's quite a spectacular battle and destruction scene. And um, the, basically the Enterprise gets ripped to shreds. <sighs> just, just take a moment. I don't... Uh, anyone that knows me knows I hate the destruction of cars and films. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, Bat the Batmobile in, ba in Batman Returns was, was devastating to me. The Batmobile... In the second Batman by Christopher Nolan, Dark Knight Returns. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, just stop destroying stuff. I mean, it, it, once you get over that, I mean, I was Star Trek Generations right. when that yeah, movie yeah, came out. Yeah. They they had to escort me out because there was a no. 
in the middle of the cinema because I grew up loving that shit. Um, at the end of the day, it is a spectacular scene. Mm. I, I can put that to one side now because essentially we, we know that it's going to follow the chronology of the original films to yeah. some extent and we're going to yeah. get the Enterprise E somehow. So, yeah. you know, let it, so it's, it's going to roll on. So, so, so yeah, the attack brilliant. is led by um, Kral, who's played by Idris Elba. Um, and he's after the weapon that was actually offered as a gift um, on the diplomatic mission at the beginning, which has been put back into the archive of the ship. Now, the attack is... The, the ships are called like bees because basically they, they are manned, but they use some kind of telepathy system mm. to get them all working. So imagine, if you will, if you think of Matrix uh, Reload and Revolutions, mm. the amount of sentinels that used to come down yeah. and actually get that kind of um, all these little ships flying, working together kind of thing. Um, like a nanobots, so nanobot technology and stuff like you see in films yeah. like Big Hero 6 yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It has that feel to it with the ships. Um, so then... Um, Kral comes on board, um, has a bit of a uh, sna- uh, face-off with Kirk. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a bit of sort of like an anti-gravity fight, which is kind of cool as well. Um, but ultimately, the ship keeps getting destroyed, and he's like to his commander, "Yeah, cut cut the head off, is it, or slice the neck?" Yeah. And then they take the rest of the ship off, um, so you just get kind of the disc at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, Kirk then is going to try and dispatch the um, actual sort of like disc of the ship. Mm-hmm. The um, saucer section. The saucer section. Um, he gets stopped, but Aurora manages to Aurora mm. manages to get there. Um, she punches the button. She flies off with the sort of like uh, part of the ship that's remaining with Kral, who believes he's got the device, opens the box, but obviously Kirk's hidden it somewhere else. Um, so uh, then the rest of the Enterprise is all like, we can't maintain. There's, we're being pulled into gravitational pull towards the Earth. Uh, not the Earth, sorry, the, the, the planet nearby. Yeah. So they, oh, everyone has to abandon ship. So all the pods can't fly out. And, but they all start getting captured. Yeah. Now, a couple of important points for the serious Trekkies. Um, you have to open your mind to the fact that the Enterprise Mark 1, mm-hmm. um, or Mark 2.1, if, if, if you're me, um, <laughs> can do some stuff I didn't know it could do. Yeah. <laughs> um, separation of the saucer section yeah. um, is something that the Enterprise D could do as far as i know i was gonna say i've seen that i've seen that in a yep. Star Trek movie before right? yeah um they've done it in a movie before yeah. they did it in generations that's right they did it two or three times maybe even four times in the tv series it right. was something okay. brilliant the d could do now i it correct me if i'm wrong Twi- twitter me if you need to uh but the d was the first that one that can do that so right. you have okay. to buy into the fact that again there are certain things for me technology that are more advanced mm-hmm. so yep. the ship can separate from the the, yeah. the main engineering section yeah. can separate into a saucer section. Yeah. That that was an interesting point for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had to, you know, Captain, you have to get down there and you have to uh separate us into the saucer section. Firstly, <laughs> there are a lot of men in red uniforms that could do that. Yeah, right. Why I send mean, your captain to the, do that? The, you know, <laughs> now the captain prepare yourself in this movie for the fact that the captain's gonna do a lot of stuff he doesn't have to do. There's there's a seat Delegation, on the bridge that he, <laughs> that he should be sitting in. Um, and we, could, we we may as well step into one or two things because for me, this was probably the turning point of the movie. Okay. The movie was at that point moving along at a very unusual pace. Mm, so faults right. that I was finding were, why on earth they sent the ship into this cloud? They could have sent a shuttle. They right. could have sent a shuttle ahead to scout, to, to scout. find out before sending a huge ship with a hundred plus people on mm-hmm. it. To go and save these people, mm-hmm. uh, they didn't yeah. know this woman. No, they right? didn't know they this woman. Just, bit, I was so like, oh, fe- your friends in danger. Yeah, cool. Your friends help. in danger. Let's go into this nebula we've never been before. Mm-hmm. But you take it on the chin because it's a Star Trek movie. Yeah, the or ship even goes if the there. Ship wait outside the clouds, and, and you see ship that through. you see that this thing's coming towards them, uh, uh, and you're you know kind of we don't know what this is now. Mm-hmm. We're not you know we're not wimps, but maybe we should turn and run. Yeah. <laughs> The, the order to like jump to warp becomes a little too late yeah. um, but it is also an epic scene because they remove the nacelles the actual nacelles the two pointy bits yeah they come off first. off yeah so off, they can't go off anywhere. the enterprise so they can't go anywhere so they have to use uh, the f- impulse engines mm-hmm. but then there's problems with dialogue there have been there are moments of dialogue that were a little off and one main point is this uh, Scotty has to do some reconfigurations yeah in engineering again Scotty is seems to be the only engineer yes yeah. i mean he has his little friend he has his little friend but, who, ha, but that's who it. disappears what, what, you know there surely again lot, he should have a team that you know the <laughs> ship is huge they've done a <laughs> yeah. brilliant job of making that ship 
as big as Texas. You feel the it's, scale. You, you of feel it. the scale of it. Yeah, They've absolutely. done that ever since the first reimagination of it when they when they did it in two thousand and nine. So for me, okay, Scotty's on his own again. Come on, he mm-hmm. should be telling people to do something. These people should be dedicated to saving the ship, yeah. and it's Scotty doing it again. But then, oh no, it's not because Kirk then has to go and separate the ship. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sh- the ship can do that. Okay, I'll take that. Um, but then they Scotty does his reconfiguration. Chekhov says something. We have a hundred percent impulse drive. Yeah. Okay. And Sulu, who is because Kirk has gone below, he's in the chair. He's in the chair. The chair says, "Okay, hundred percent on the hundred uh, percent power, please." And it's like, well, you just said you had hundred percent, so yeah. you don't need to say it again. And th- there are a few of these. So the film, for me, for some strange reason, is off to a very shaky start by mm-hmm. this point. And the thing that's keeping it its head above water is this epic scene where you have to watch a ship that you love just get destroyed. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, Yeah, from a spectacle for me, point of view, yeah. it was great. For me, so, let's yeah. call this Act 1. Yeah. Okay, that's right. That, I'd agree. That's Act 1. So, now I'm going into Act 2. So, yeah. So, what, so what's left of this ship? Crash lands on the planet. And so, basically, then we have these pairing off of people. So Kirk and Chekhov are together and um, they are with the alien who raised a distress signal uh, at the beginning. Turns out that she's saying that she's a captain of another ship and that Kroll has her um, crew and that she had to make that in order to keep them alive and keep them safe. Um, Spock and Bones um, are off together. So um, they ejected together and managed to get away together. And then you've got Scotty who's out on his own. He managed to get out as well. So Scotty's out on his own. He's found by Jayla. So this is the new character you see in the trailer. Sort of like white hair, face paint with the bow staff. Um, she's played by Sophia Butella, um, who is from Kingsman Secret Service. Can't believe that's the same girl. Yeah, but... so she's the girl with the <laughs> blades for legs, um, who's um, Samuel Jackson's character, sort of like right-hand woman. Um, and she protects him from the locals. Um, she recognises his badge. Um, he's like, I'm a Starfleet engineer. And she's like, I, you know, he goes, I can fix things. She's like, I know what an engineer can do. I need you to fix something. Um, I'll help you find your crew. Deal made. Um, Spock and Bones have some really nice scenes together. Um, so um, Spock is um, injured uh, from the crash. He has some shrapnel in him. And they have a little bit of banter about, again, Spock not understanding humour necessarily, where he's talking about horse shit. He's like, I don't understand how horse, horse excrement would be a viable you know, topic of this conversation at this point. Um, Bones pulls it out, um, sort of like patches him up. But then we have this um, scene together where um, Bones seems to be the go-to guy to open up, right? Yeah. So um, Spock um, opens up to Bones the fact that he had been told back on uh, Yorktown that um, Admiral Spock... Ambassador uh, Spock. Sorry, Ambassador yeah. Spock had been um, had, had, had died, basically. Um, where we do get a, a really touching scene where he opens up this sort of like a notification pad and you see the picture of Spock as he looked in the first film, mm-hmm. um, and he gives the dates of you know born and died kind of thing, yeah. and, you know, and it's he, you know Spock gets emotional, and so Spock feels at this point that he needs to leave Starfleet, he needs to follow um, you know Spock Prime's kind of um, role where he's rebuilding the Vulcan community, the fact that their planet got destroyed and stuff mm. like that in the previous films. Um, so he you know he opens up to Bones about you know him thinking of leaving as well. Um, then so we see a little bit more emotion from him at this point, don't we? Uh, yeah, and I think at this point I should point out that the best person in all three movies has been Carl Urban. Yeah, he has done fantastic. the best Dr. Bones impression. Dee Forrest Kelly would be would be truly honoured yeah. um, to see him do this. He, he does, uh, you know, the lines are there. Um, I mean, he, I, I, if, if you want to play a drinking game, yeah. the amount of time he says, damn it. Yeah. Or, you damn know, it, Jim. Damn it, Jim. Damn it, Jim. I'm a doctor, not a pilot. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> yeah, it, we have that line but in the movie. But he also has great. brilliant, brilliant comic timing in this. Oh, yeah. He's, really, he's really just good. genuinely He is the comic funny. relief. Yeah. Pre- like the last couple of films, you felt was more Scotty. Yeah. But I really didn't get that from him this time. I didn't get that from him in that he was really engaged with the new character. Mm. They, they obviously had a kind of a thing within that. Um, I think we said we said off camera earlier on that he he is in the film a lot, which is a little unusual for when someone writes the movie. Yeah, considering he was a co-writer. Uh, because on they it. they really did give him his own scenes yeah. with the new with with Jaya uh, Jaya, uh, Jaya. He had uh, we had Bones mm-hmm. and Spock. We'd see the crew, and it, it was a bit strange because yeah. they they had one or two bits. Yeah, um, I felt given that. Um, we touched on this earlier on the prominence of uh, John Shu 
coming out and saying his character was gay. I mm. thought the character would feature in the movie more, especially yeah. since we'd just seen Family. Yeah, uh, that's right. But shit. basically, he's um, kidnapped with uh, Uhura. Yeah, and, and the crew. Rest and the crew. And, 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 you don't really see much of them. What I was actually really surprised is that we actually got to uh, see quite a bit of Chekhov mm. and Anton Yelchin, which was, which is great to see. Not just because of the tragedy that's happened with him passing after the movie um, was finished, but um, he was, it was he's a really good character. Yeah, good and character, good actor, and a really good actor. Um, and he, I thought he was brilliant. He plays it. Kirk. He plays. He plays it brilliantly. Mm. They. They. You know, uh, I think he would would be um, sorely missed on set yeah. um, in, in, when they do the next movie. And I'd love to talk about my thoughts on some of the things I've read online. Yeah, later no, on. absolutely. Um, right, sorry for the quick cut there, but uh, my doorbell rang and my neighbour brought me some uh, dinner. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so we got some amazing uh, Indian food for dinner. So win-win for me. Uh, right, okay. So coming back to it. So we cut away now to um, see more of uh, Aurora. She's got some screen time with um, Kral, Idris Elba. Mm. So we can see a little bit more of him, his menacing. Um, he, he can speak sort of English. Um, he's very much alien-figured. Um, so alien head, he's got sort of vampire teeth and, you know, he chews up the screen, you know, so he's, he's, he's very, you know, we get he's evil, right? Um, and he now possesses the weapon, um, the, the doomsday weapon, um, because basically Kirk had hidden it in the back of the head of one of the, of um, Ensign Sile, one of the Ensign right, Sile, okay. um, who is a species, I'll have to figure out what she is uh, at some point. Um, There's very much reminiscence of the alien. But she, things, but yeah, yeah, but she had um, an unusual setup where her head could open up like this into these tentacles and it was hidden there. And that's yeah. where Kirk had hidden it in a scene very briefly when they're still on board on the, the ship Enterprise and down, where he'd yeah. said, I need you to do something for me. But yeah. we, the audience, don't at that time hear yeah. what it is. And I'd actually forgotten that you'd asked her to do anything. Yeah, yeah. So um, it actually played out quite well. Um, and um, so he demonstrates the power by actually killing the one who hid it. And basically, it seems like this kind of space dust that basically eats the flesh and disappears. Mm. I, the, well, I would like to point out that weapon. non-Trekkies are going to be very annoyed about how Kral got his hand back on it. So mm-hmm. essentially, Kral was about to kill uh, Sulu. Sulu, yeah. And she says, stop, I'll, I'll let you have it. Yeah. Now, with the greatest of respect, if you're a Starfleet officer... <laughs> yes, I'm gonna go all trekky. You're a Starfleet <laughs> officer, and your captain tells you to do something. See it to the and end. And humanity may depend on it. Oh well, maybe not humanity, because uh, to be fair, we don't know what this thing was for at this point oh, in the movie. Exactly. Sure. But what if your captain tells you to do something, you do it. And she caved. She caved like 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 a like one of those little troll keychains that you get. It was it was. <laughs> It was a little bit pathetic yeah. um, and a little predictable and Star Trek's a bit It's one of those cliche scenes, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's just like, I'm going to kill this person if you don't tell me where this thing is. And no, no, don't tell him. Don't tell him. Yeah, here it is. Okay, fine. Um, so it's a, it's a weapon that is bad for bad. We don't know where it's come from, why it is doing what it's doing. Um, but then ultimately, um, we have Scotty. Now, we go back to Scotty and um, Jayla takes him back to her home and this home turns out to be a another us the uss franklin franklin ship so basically this is a ship that disappeared over a hundred years ago um and it's like ended up on this planet so this is the thing that she needed help fixing and um so scotty's trying to help her get it back up and running uh they eventually do um so then they can start getting the uh teleportation working and they rescue um bones and spock from where they are on the planet and the Kirk comes back, so they check off. So they're all kind of together in the ship now. So we have the core of the crew back onto the ship, and now they're like, right, we need to rescue everybody else and stop um, Kral. So, so then uh, Kral, so basically they go on the rescue mission. Obviously, they manage to get everybody out. Um, Kral escapes, and he flees with all his ships because um, they're going to go attack Yorktown with his doomsday weapon. Um, so the ship is uh, so they manage to get the ship up and running. Um, they take a dive off the edge, and that cliche moment, ship disappears. Oh no, it's all good. I'll and take that. that. I'll take for a ship that's <laughs> you that, it. For, you for, it. That I, I, I was, I was like, actually, the way this movie's going, the ship might crash, yeah. um, and they might just have to go. Okay, back to square Draw. one. Um, so then they're, they're chasing after Grawl, and obviously they've got all these sort of like bees, is what they call the ships. Mm. Now we said that the bees kind of work on this um, sort of like um, synced. Um, 
they said I think they said telepathy I think yeah. even didn't they where they're all working together in stream so they need to disrupt that so they need to find a frequency that's going to disrupt that um, and they work out that a radio frequency is going to be the best thing and they need to put something through it so they're going to put music through it and I got to say in order to do it they had to beam um, Spock on there and because he's injured he insists someone goes with him <laughs> yes. so it's phones which leads for me one of the funniest scenes in the yeah. movie because where... again the captain's going to do it all himself right so yeah. he's going to beam across one of the other ships and then um, Spock's like no it's logical I was one of these ships earlier it makes more sense but then Uru's like but you're injured and he's like well there's somebody else who knows the ship just as well and who can attend to me if needed my medical condition and Moses is like you want me to do what <laughs> I think uh, they get on the teleportation device and then he delivers the line Damn, damn, it. It, damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a flight. And, and then that's it the last thing you hear. Yeah. Which is like <laughs> uh, that, was, that was great. That, that was a really funny scene. That was really good. Mm. Um, and then, um, so what the, the music that selected, because um, um, Jayla, she has, she found the music system on the old ship, which she used to listen to, and they um, go and play classical music, which is uh, the Beastie Boys Sabotage. No. Now that explains why that music was in the trailer. Absolutely. Oh. And it, it was actually the way it's delivered in the film it actually really worked. It was um, brilliant. I think so, for me, there was a moment in that movie and I realised that that is my, that is the poster. <laughs> that should that, have been the poster, That right? is the screenshot for my iPad. That will be in the background. Yeah. There's a brilliant moment with the swarm and because they've tapped into the frequency, they're able to destroy them mm -hmm. and shoot at them and they were able to give the frequency to the guns and cannons that defend the York, the York, to, the, the uh, York, York, York town. Yeah. And they were and able to play it that. as well. And there's a brilliant moment with the ship. Interestingly enough, because of the distance um, of the ship, you in the trailer, you would not know that that's not the Enterprise. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, yeah. so it's actually the Franklin that gets to make that badass move yeah, through yeah. the swarm, destroying it. Yeah. And that, you know, that, the movie is picking up pace. Yeah. You was, know, yeah, you're, that was a you're very entertaining a brilliant, brilliant scene. Finale. Yeah. Um, but again, obviously, um, Kroll escapes um, and he he get, manages to get into the uh, to Yorktown. Um, and at this point, he sort of crash lands. They land. They right now we need to go chase him. We need to find him. Now, the thing about Kroll is he has found a way to prolong life. So in the scene with Aura, he basically, he drains the energy and life out of people. Yeah. And you see them basically, the screens are getting almost, almost like corpses. Mm. And he becomes younger. So you actually see a transformation of him throughout the film. And he actually becomes more human looking. Um, so it's sort of like the head gets smaller, um, the teeth get more um, human-like. So his speech improves through it and stuff like that. And um, we get to a scene in the ship um, where they're like, right, we need to find him. And it clicked for me straight away when they walk past some CCTV or some footage from the old ship where there was like CCTV recording and Aurora goes back and keeps rewinding, keeps rewinding, keeps rewinding, zooms in and they find Idris Elba in human form. He was the captain of the Franklin. So he was the one who went down with that ship and they, repl they replaced like a captain's log um, and basically they ended up on the ship. It was like him and two or three other people left. Starfleet didn't find him, didn't come rescue him. And basically, we're talking like hundreds of years here, right? So with this technology that he's found to keep himself alive, he has gone crazy. And basically, he wants to destroy Starfleet and kill everyone and everything associated with it because of what they did to him. And I think it was called Captain Edison. I'm sorry, I've actually yeah, forgotten it from the right, movie, yeah. but I think it's Captain Edison. And for me, it was good to see Idris Elba looking like Idris Elba. Yeah. It was interesting to have him covered up. Yeah. So there are some critics that might pull that out, although I know the critics mm -hmm. happen to love the movie at the moment. But they, they tend but to they... do this with villains at the moment. So they did it with um, Oscar Isaacs in Apocalypse. Mm. Um, you know, and they've, uh, they seem to, if you have like a great actor being a villain, they want to kind of cover them up. You know, so you don't really get to see as much acting out of them. As yeah. You like. I mean, for a large part of the movie, he can't, his English, his, his grasp of the, of the English language yeah. is, 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 very, is there. But and they ask you ask him how do you know our language and he kind of he says it's like I know you're you kind. Know kind and he speaks and he's clearly got difficulty speaking. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not going to slate the movie for having him that. It's just something yeah. to be aware of. Uh, you know, in one hand, yeah. I'm always always happy and proud of what Idris does. He's a phenomenal oh, yeah. phenomenal actor, and uh, one of, I think he's one of the greatest actors of a generation. Mm -hmm. He keeps on pulling in these performances mm -hmm. in movies and getting into these franchises where he can, um, you know, grow and grow and stretch. I think um, 
like I said, going back to my earlier point, it is great to see him looking himself, mm-hmm. so to speak, at the end of the so movie. Just briefly, but yeah. he, even to the point where he's reduced as close to him as you can, his face is still not his own. Yeah. You only see that in the recorded footage of yeah. the history of Fisher. And essentially what I think it comes around to is being a brilliant, brilliant twist in the movie. Mm-hmm. The fact that he's human, the fact that he was former Starfleet yeah. is, is genius because uh, the best villains sometimes turn out to be the people you would trust the most, the people yeah. you would least expect yeah. to do something like this. Because you know? he was like, supposed to be like a decorated war um, hero and stuff like that, so an actual soldier. Yeah, um, he was actually, he... they called him a, a, a Mako, which we'll come back to later on, ties into Enterprise. And we'll, right, we'll, okay. We'll, yeah. um, so basically it comes down to a one-on-one uh, with Kirk. Um, he's trying to release the weapon into the Yorktown, so like breathing uh, air atmosphere, so it will kill everybody. Um, ultimately, uh, he gets sucked down into space with his device, killing him. Kirk almost goes the same way, but Spock and Bones come to the rescue at the end um, to save him from the same fate. Um, and basically, the, then the kind of movie wraps up at that point. So um, Kirk, who doesn't like a thing, make have a thing of his birthday. They throw him a, a surprise birthday party. Everyone's chilled. Everyone's having drinks. Um, we get to see that um, Jailer is admitted to the academy. So Kirk pulls some strings. Um, he turns the job, the vice admiral job down. He's like, it doesn't involve flying, does it? He's like, where's the fun in that? Um, Spock, we find, you know, he's going to be staying as well. He realizes that Jim can't do it without him. And when when he rescues Jim, he actually says, how could I ever do this without you? And you kind of see him in the face there. He realizes, he has that look with bones. He's like, yeah, he really yeah. can't do it without you. Um, I think the one thing that maybe disappointed me a little bit about this film was I didn't feel the chemistry as much between Kirk and Spock. Yeah, as the other films, because they don't have actually have a lot of screen time together. No. You you see more with Kirk and Chekhov and Bones and Spock. And I did you that, feel you missed that? Or I think, think it was there was chemistry. Better, there was, there was different chemistry. There was chemistry. strange chemistry going on everywhere. There was a sense to me that one or two characters just. One or two people just seemed a little lost in the movie and mm-hmm. as to where their place was. Mm-hmm. Anton Yelchin, by an unusual coincidence, had more scenes than he's had in the other movies. Yeah. Until uh, they meet up as a group, then he kind yeah. of disappears into the background yeah. again. Zoe, right? Zoe uh, Saldana. 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 Saldana, uh, Saldana has um, she, for me, lower she, scenes. And yeah. I, I know you think she was a damsel. She, I think she had some bad, yeah, badass scenes. She had a couple of badass scenes, but then again, she turned into this damsel in distress. Yeah. And then again, when they meet up... Up to the point where they leave the planet, the rest of the crew really don't do much. Yeah. Um, it's like Bones and Spock and Kirk, and that's kind of it. Yeah. And that's kind of disappointing. Um, but there is, there's, so before I go on to the final scene, one of the, uh, one of the really nice scenes that I've, we had was, um, Krull is um, going in a spaceship, he's heading towards direction, and Bones and Spock are chasing after him in the same kind of alien ship, and the Enterprise comes to intersect now this was a really great scene and basically it does this great turn underneath um yorktown sort of like it's like tunnels and under the water kind of thing and it bursts through the water to allow the ship to kind of crash into it now I, I might it. i might have to and go back to my whole physics kind of like reading to do this so basically yorktown is built on inverse gravity technology that's right the theory all that, these different spirals so yeah. you'll be on one part and you'll look up and see the other street upside down so imagine the world and obviously we're on the outside Mm -hmm. of the world looking out at space yorktown Mm -hmm. has been the principle of inverted gravity so basically the gravity is a strongest point in the middle Mm -hmm. and they use some form of anti-graviton power which means that everybody is inside looking in yeah which is why you can have like a building instead of being like that down there and a building down there and it makes for a very intro. It makes for a fantastic battle because yeah, yeah. if someone's coming from that direction, you can come from their turn yeah. and stop them. It's the, it's the most spect- it's the. I would say it's actually the mo- the second most spectacular part of the scene because yeah. I actually th- of the film because I think the 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 swarm battle yeah. is 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 it has is, a big is, impact, is, is yeah. such and a big it goes impact. on for quite a while. That yeah, as well. it's, uh, it's it's prolonged and um, it kind of brings me to. Um, the, the fact that I admire that the writers are doing bold things like this. Mm-hmm. These are things that they just didn't have the technology to do mm-hmm. in the, um, in the let's say, the old original yeah, series yeah. movies. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the space stations were, you know, in space. They were huge space docks. They've managed, they, they, I mean, this was... There's no outside field. Yeah, really, you know, yeah. They, they were able to just pack loads of people in. Um, and 
there was a true feeling of what, despite the fact they're CG, there was a true feeling of that they had loads of extras. Yeah, they yeah, they yeah. had so many people yeah. in this movie actually mm-hmm. filling the screen in the background yeah. to actually make it like one giant. Yeah, we'll say city. I yeah, mean, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. it's not it's, it's, it's not a city planet. Space. Yeah. I mean, it looked like a planet from a distance, yeah. but it's a, 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 a you know what small sized moon because yeah, that's yeah, how big yeah, Star yeah, Trek can yeah. be sometimes. Um, and then we go to sort of probably the most impactful. Um, scene of the film where Spock receives the possessions of um, Ambassador Spock and he opens up um, this thing and there's a photo in it and the photo is of Spock with the entire original cast in their red uniforms on the deck of the Enterprise Shatner gets his cameo (laughs) (laughs) and it's a very very touching scene yeah um it's i know you really felt emotional at that point as well me not even being a trekking i was like that that's such a nice touch um in the credits it does pause midway credits and say in the memory of leonard nimoy and for anton they don't even say his surname because he's family yeah right? and um so you know there were some real nice dedications there but that scene was i think i think very know, very the, emotional the good emotional pause. i mean it, it, it kind of dawned on me while while looking at that uh because it had because it had aurora yeah, bones it had that, Scotty, that only three the crew, yeah. of those four of those actors in that picture are still with us uh, right, george yeah. takai uh you got walter Coonan. Yeah. Michelle Nichols and William Shatner, yeah. uh, but James Dugan, DeForest Kelly, and uh, Leonard Nimoy are no longer with yeah, us. That's right. And um, and and the world is um is sadder for it. And yeah, so it was a huge. It was. It was. Huge it, was, to pay. it was. It was always going to be tricky to do it but they mm-hmm. did it they did it brilliantly yeah, yeah i gotta say they did it brilliantly with that, that moment really, really and, and and it was a brilliant way to close what i i'm now going to say act two of the of of the movie right um, okay it, you know it, it, it really does have a shaky start but yeah. it kind of comes through it still has its niggles and its flaws mm-hmm. and i think as uh, and most star trek fans will just say oh, i'm gonna allow it i'm gonna yeah. just just go along with it mm-hmm. sometimes with a movie you just have to just submit to the irrationality of yeah. certain decisions you said. You know, some of the CG in some scenes were a little bit ropey. There's some scenes where there's like gas used and it looks very fake on screen. Mm. Um, there's a fight where it, where they're fighting against the anti-gravity towards the end, um, Kirk and um, um, Kral, and the characters are like floating in space and they look very cartoonish. I did say when we came There's out, thank like God that. we actually didn't see it in 3D. Yeah. I think if I'd seen that in 3D, I would be coming out there with a huge migraine. Yeah, it's, th- there's some really weird tra- tracking shots, cut shots, very quick pace shots sometimes in terms of the action scenes. It would have been quite fun. I mean, I know, you know, I know guys uh, that will have an opinion on whether it was shot for 3D or not. Yeah, it seems that probably, all movies are to a certain extent, to but to not all extent. movies are, be- are better but for it. But they're not filmed with the right technology. Yeah. So you don't get the depth of 3D that you Especially would with the Especially with, right with that much computer generation in the background yeah. and the foreground, it um, kind of would have, yeah. you know. And then the movie ties up with the ent- the new ship being built. Um, sort of like a time lapse video is done. Um, so they see the ship being built, speeds up, it's completed goes off um ncc 1701-a there you go this is why we have him here (laughs) um so yeah overall um i quite enjoyed the movie um it did drag in some parts i think a little bit uh for me i i probably wanted a little bit more humor from a star trek movie because i think the first film i really enjoyed the first to reboot the franchise the second one i enjoyed this more than the last one um but i would have liked a little bit more humor for it Scotty was a bit of a letdown for me in a character because normally, uh, you know, I find him quite funny. There wasn't really any, you know, comic lines from him. Mm. But for me, the best thing in this was Carl Urban. You know, as Bones, you know, he he hams it up, but he does it so brilliantly that it's just like, you know, he's great in every scene. Um, I think the the Jailer character, there could have been some more depth to her, so you get a little bit of understanding of where she's from, but again you know once they get back on the ship she's kind of irrelevant again until yeah. the end she may be coming back in future ones um because she's admitted to the academy but we'll see but um i think for me overall i'll probably give it um because of those really nice moments um especially the respects to the um what's come before it i'll probably give it about seven out of ten so what about yourself for me um i was disappointed for the star of the movie mm-hmm. for it rescued itself at the end with some brilliant action sequences mm-hmm. For me, there are also Easter eggs. Uh, once you find out yeah. that uh, Idris Elba's character was a former Starfleet captain and mm-hmm. that he was part of Mako, which is the military uh, part of Starfleet, right. that ties into Enterprise and the whole of the uh, season three, season four of Enterprise and them trying to fight the Zindi, who were the uh, alien race that tried to uh, destroy Earth in the TV mm-hmm. series. Now, that should have been clearer 
in the movie. There right, are a yes. lot of people. I mean, that I, are, I, it's nothing I would have yeah, picked up on. You, and you, pick, you barely picked up on it being a Trekkie, right? Yeah. Because it was mentioned so quickly. It was mentioned so quickly. I realized that the USS Franklin looked in the style of the Enterprise and XO yeah. one, uh, the one that was captured by Captain Archer. Uh, but all in all, great movie. Um, I'm concerned by the things that I've read online regarding the fact that people like Zachary Quinto had to be convinced, and so did John Shu, to do another one. Uh, Chris Pine and uh, Zachary Quinto, apparently, when they signed up, have clauses to possibly do a fourth. Right, they have okay. to come back and do a fourth. They really yeah. do. Um, it'll be perfect to come out in uh, 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that point, you'll have had the new TV series. That's right. Yeah. For me, I'm going to give it a seven... Seven and a half? Yeah, seven and a half out of ten. I yeah. think the tributes did it for me as well. Yeah. Um, and on one last point, um, we talked about Anton Yeltsin. Let some time pass, but I do believe he should be recast at some point. I think it would be yeah. a disservice to they've, the actor. They've to talked, not, to, yeah, to they've talked at the moment that um, they haven't had discussions about yeah. recasting the character. Um, you know, my question to Richard at the end was, you know, um, you know, I loved him in that role and you know why couldn't we just have another character do that role and you made a very good point well if any of the other actors pass like chris pine or zachary quinto you know touch with god forbid um they would recast and it's a, a very good point mm. to be honest and at what point do you draw the line so yeah you know maybe they don't have the character in the next one maybe it's a bit too soon but if again if they go on further maybe they do so we'll have to wait and see but, uh, but that's it. Thank you very much for watching. That was our spoiler review of Star Trek Beyond. Um, if you enjoyed the video, and you know what? Even if you didn't, hit the subscribe button below. Uh, please share the video with everybody you know. And um, we'll be back soon with another spoiler review. Thanks very much for watching.